from Milan. And Funko, just right. So, Funko, uh, uh, right. Uh, uh, today, we enter into this uh, unit of the Asia Master. And as you will see, these two sections, these two figures and texts, uh, one is already 1960, one is 1980, there's certain genealogical historical relation between the two moments, right? And today, uh, we're very happy to have a uh, you know, good friend here to give the lecture. Uh, let me introduce them very, very briefly. Uh, Ikegami. Uh, he actually just spent uh, two years, finished the two years of teaching in Tianjin uh, University of Foreign Study, uh, Foreign Language. Uh, he was uh, the editor for Kendai Shizou Modern Contemporary Thought for 20 years, based in Tokyo very, very at the center of uh, different trafficking on his network. And he is a core member of the Modern Asian Thought Project. So, and he organized many, many study groups, including uh, Takeuchi study. So, uh, within our network, I think he's one of the best persons to give this uh, lecture. And he moves around uh, with the methodology of Asia semester, so he will ask you, if you haven't uh, got the question uh, he posed for the group discussion at hand is in the back you know, of the room. So you can find it there. Right. And my colleague, Lan Hong Yue, is an interesting student and he is an expert. He's specializing in actually classical Japanese thought. Can I say that? Yeah. 18th, 18th century, yes. And so we have his uh, support with uh, the teaching. And uh, uh, very pleased to have uh, Mark Winchester to help us out with the uh, translation. Uh, Mark is teaching in Kanda, Kanda University of International Studies. And he, I think he specialized in Japanese uh, minority, like Ainu, and so on. Uh, we're very pleased he fly all the way to help, with, help, help, help us with this. Uh, so this is the situation. And we're going to do the change of members and all that discussion thing later on, OK? So I'll now invite uh, Ikegami to speak. Mm. And please use your <laughs> uh, first. Uh, hello, Tajaho, <laughs> Konnichiwa. Uh, um, uh, well, my major is uh, to be in direct history of the um, 18th and 19th century. So, actually, I'm not so qualified to, to introduce the guys, the, the sort of Takenji Yoshimi here. Uh, I guess my job here is just um, to explain what was said in this text and uh, um, explain some background about this, these articles. And since I got my degree uh, in Tokyo University, Japan, so actually I cannot speak English as fluently as uh, my uh, Chinese or Japanese. Um, but today I, I would challenge to uh, teach in English. Okay. Uh, okay, here let's first meet uh, the uh, Take Uji Yoshimi. This man is uh, Take Uji Yoshimi. He had a bald head, just like Michel Foucault. <laughs> <laughs> and a well, uh, 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 black classical glasses. Um, somehow I just feel uh, very uh, cool and charming. And his friend, Marimel Masao, also well. Uh, Black classic glasses. And uh, do, you, do you guys know this man? Please raise your hand if you know this man. 
Okay, thank you. Okay, this 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 man is uh, uh, probably the most uh, famous um, uh, intellectual in the post-war Japan. Uh, his special his major is uh, political thought, Japanese political political thought. So the major of the Takeuchi Yoshimi is Chinese Chinese literature. So they are both not. The major is different, totally different, but they are very close different, uh, close friends. So there is a story about they both. They both. Uh, when Maria Masao get an idea, he will go straight to the house of Takeuji Yoshi to check if his idea is okay or not. And he will talk, just, co just talk, keep on talking, talk a lot. Then the um, Takeuchi Yoshimi will just listen. He is a very good listener. Um, but he will react with his body or his voices. Some, something like, mm hmm, mm hmm. <coughs> <coughs> like this. <laughs> then then Maramasa will catch the hint. He will, he will try to rethink his ideas. Okay. So from this story, we will, we, we will know that uh, Takeuchi. Uji Yoshimi is a very smart guy, and he has a very good sense of the, the knowledge. Oh, okay, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, please raise your hand. We will ask Professor Trichetta for help, okay? Um, okay, so, uh, so, but, so he, he always, and the one thing we should know is that he always expresses his idea in a unique way. So it's not easy to catch what is try to say in the in his articles. But today the text that we are going to read, the Asia's method, actually is a, is an easy one. Because this article is a note of a speech. A note of speech. He speak a speech, the audience is the college students. So he tried to express um, his idea in a simple way. Okay? So that speech it actually um, was uh, invited by uh, also one of his friends, uh, Takeda Kiyoko, this uh, elegant lady. And I think this is important is that Takeda Kiyoko and uh, Marina Masao and uh, Takeda, uh, Takeuchi Yoshimi, they are both the co member of a group called the Science of Salt Research Group. I don't know much about this, this group, but I think it is important if you want to study the post-war Japan intellectual history. Because a lot of uh, famous work of the post-war Japan intellectual history was produced by the member of this uh, group. Okay, because the connection of, the connection of, the, uh, of, of them, of, of, among them, so, Takeuchi Yoshimi was invited by the, by the Takeda Kiyoko to the uh, ICU, uh, International Christian University, to teach, um, uh, to, to give a speech. Okay. Um, this is the, some, one background I want to um, introduce you, uh, I want to explain. The other background is that, according to what Takeuchi Yoshimi has said, and this article actually is Corresponding to the uh, content of the another famous article called "What is Modernity," which was write, which was uh, written uh, in the 1948. Oh, it, it is a very long paper, very long paper. Somehow, maybe, maybe we can we, we can take the Asia's method method is a digest version of this this uh, article. Um, so he, actually, he. If you want to know the, the content of the Asia as methods better, you should read this article. Uh, for example, he, he explains what is modernity, what is Europe, what is Orient very clearly, clearly in, the, in, this, in this article. Um, okay, he say that Europe is, a, is some kind of notion of self-invasion or self-reservation. On the contrary, Asia or the Orient is a is a is a notion, an idea of the uh, resistance, and uh, also 
He explained the differences between Europe and the Orient in, the, in his, his philosophy of history, in the world history. He said the Europe and the Orient encountered each other on a certain uh, space, spatial temporal point, thereby initiating the movement of advance and retreat. So here, Europe is means the um, a movement of the event, advance, and the, the Orient, Asia, is a movement of retreat. But of course, the retreat is with resistance. Okay. So if you and and it, based on this kind of thing, he said Japan is nothing. Japan's culture is some is tenko tenko culture. Tenko here. This is the this is the word. Tenko means the means without no resistance. That is very famous of the uh, Takeuchi means thought. Anyway, what I want, want to try to say is that it is, it, is, it is necessary if you want to know what he's trying to say in, the, uh, in this paper, Asia as a method, that you must read the another paper, what is my identity. Okay. Oh, okay, another background I want to say is that actually this this paper was uh, this speech was uh, kept was kept in the uh, 1960s, and that year a uh, very important historical event happened. That is the uh, so-called Ambotoso and, uh, and a campaign against the um, Japan-U.S. Uh, security treaties. Okay, this is very important to to that we should know, but I will explain this. Later, okay, okay. Then let's uh, see what he is, is talking about. What he is, uh, said in this text. Actually, in this uh, article, he asks several questions and uh, give uh, an answers by himself. The first uh, question is, what interest initially led himself Takeuchi Yoshimi to the coast of? The Chinese Japanese studies, uh, Chinese studies. He said that he enrolled Tokyo Imperial University. Not, not in, at first, not just he, not because he he liked Chinese literature, just because it is the easiest to enter in the university, Tokyo University. Okay. So the first time he felt he was really interested in the Chinese literature, literature was because of a visit uh, uh, to the China. Beijing, Beijing in the uh, 1932. He said that in that time he, I was moved by the fact that these people seem to have the same ideas I, as I did when we study Asian history or geography at school. No one teaches that there are actually people there. Well, I think this is very important because he, he saw China in a different way uh, from the the contemporary the intellectual in that time. Uh, for example, there's a, a famous uh, novelist uh, called Akagawa Ryunosuke. He also uh, visited China in the 1925, and he wrote uh, his and he published his book about the, the trip. And he say the Chinese people just feel sick. On, and uh, and just cruel, okay, Chinese. But this is you 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 guys come from your yeah, friends come from China, right? You 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 guys would be surprised why we, we Chinese don't doesn't does not grow people, right? But in that time, that a lot of Japanese think think thought that Chinese are cruel people, brutal people. Uh, actually, there is a text very important that a book. Called the uh, national character, uh, something about the, a book about the national character of, of Japanese. Um, there are one of the the national character of Japanese is that Japanese is.
they keep they kept this uh, questions, just three answers. One is that the presence of the American occupations. And uh, the other is that the, the Japanese contempt for China. And the third is most important, is that that the way of the Japanese people thinking about the, the war, they think it, they, there is just something wrong about the Japanese thinking, the way of Japanese thinking about the, the war. Because the Japanese think the defeat was impossible. They avoid to think about the possibility of being defeated. On the contrary, China has a theory, has a theory which uh, is a theory called presence of the victories. Which theory is, is, uh, is Mao Zedong's uh, discourses of portrayed warfare? Okay, that you guys just read last week, right? I don't know much about this. Instead, I want to say something. When I have I read about this, I, I remind uh, um, a movie which was which was uh, just played uh, recently in, China, in Taiwan. That is a very uh, famous movie that's called Kano. Kano, uh, this is a story about a baseball team which present Taiwan to join the high school, Japanese high school, uh, high school championship in the Koxian, Jia Ziyuan. Um, so the coach is Japanese. There is a um, also in the, the story is happened in the 1931 in the colonial era. Um, there is a famous nice uh, word in that movie. That's called in English. Uh, don't don't think about winning. Think that you cannot lose. Well, a lot of Taiwanese or the Taiwan, Taiwan's young men think this is cool and inspiring. Okay, but according what? Take Uchi Yoshimi has said, actually, although this is inspiring, but it's just a loser's idea. <laughs> it, it, it's just a point to think about the lose, the possibility of being defeated. And uh, I think it, it is just something that a uh, heritage of the so called Japanese spirit. But uh, according to what Take Uchi Yoshimi has said, Japanese spirit is actually a loser's idea, okay? So, so I, I think somehow when I read that what uh, Takeuchi Yoshimi has said in, in, in these papers, I just somehow feel pitiful about the Taiwanese young men because we, we are just feel satisfied with these kind of ideas, okay? Okay, I think the, the, the last uh, question he asked in this question is, is what is the method of the uh, Asia? Then there is a very famous uh, line that I just, I will, I will read this. He said, Ra rather the Orient must uh, re embrace, re embrace the West. It must change the West itself in order to realize the latest outstanding cultural values on a greater scale. Such a roadback of culture or values would create universality. The Orient must change the West in order to further ele elevate those universal values that the West is produced. So what is the value that West uh, produced? Of course, that is the value that of the freedom and the, and the equality. Or, or, some, or something like uh, individualism. So, what is important is that he thinks this kind of value actually is universal. But there is a problem is that this kind of value was exploited by the colonial invasion. So, so it must be resisted by the Asians. So Asia here means a, a notion of subjective resistance and is a method it is, it is the process of the subject self formation. Okay, so he this this is what he said in the last of these uh, articles. But and, uh, another uh, point I want to say is that this this speech or this article actually speaks to the Japanese. So they say he said the Japanese must grasp these ideas well. So to the Japanese Asia 
is a method. Is a method. So here you want to say, he said to the Japanese students that you guys must have the spirit of resistance. So that was said in the 1960s that the campaign of the uh, campaign of the uh, campaign against the Japan UN security uh, U.S. security treaties. Okay, happened in the 1960s. So in that years, he can dedicated his life to this campaign. But uh, we we all know actually the treaty was signed. So he resigned his job uh, uh, in the Tokyo Metropolitan Universities. And later he wrote an article called "Why I Say We We Gain the Victories." Uh, he said that is important is that that in this campaign I saw the spirit of the resistance of the Japanese peoples. So he said in this way we we could say we 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 gain the victories. So he said if the Japanese people doesn't it still have the have the several characters uh, then Japanese we could not say Japanese Japan is an independent nation. Okay. That's what he said in the in that years. But later in the sixty uh, sixty six uh, he wrote another uh, article called Foresight and uh, Mistake. He said he he was disappointed with the Japanese government and Japanese peoples. He said now Japan as a nation is signed out uh, is in the condition of a stateless Okay. So why he changes his, his ideas, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I think maybe uh, Professor Shika or, or Ikigami will explain this. I don't know. Actually, I want to know why he he, he changes like his his thought about the the, um, the Japanese peoples. But if we see the recently the circumstances in, in Japan, we we may agree, but. That Takeuchi Yoshimi had said in the 1960s. You, you, say, you, you guys don't know that the Japanese government now has, uh, has sh Shudan Jieken, uh, no, <laughs> the collective uh, self, self, the right of collective uh, self defense, that the Abe government tried to uh, reintegrate. It really creates the constitution. Okay, so, um, but there is a, a event I think you guys may know that a man who burned himself next to Shinjuku Station uh, tried to protest these things, the, the, the government's, government's, government's decisions. But in this event, we may say that there's still some, some resistance spirits still exist in. Japanese societies. But another thing we should know is that the mainstream mainstream media was ignore this event. Somehow there is some kind of mood of uh, self restraint in the Japanese society. So in, in in this meeting, I don't know is if Japan is if we still can call Japan the democratic nations, I think this is the uh, a question you you guys may think or especially the friends come from Japan. Okay, and unless I want to say that actually, what is the Asia's method? The the answer actually is open. That to the Japanese Asia, uh, Lushin is a method, but you can find your own method um, in your own conditions, your nation's conditions. Then I think. Uh, Later, the professor Ikigami will explain this more, more clearly. Then I, I think my job is done here. Then I will please uh, take over.
Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Ikegami. Uh, I will write the Chinese character. <laughs> this is uh, my name. Uh, maybe you eat every day. Uh, to I will speak uh, from from now on. I will speak in Japanese. Uh, everybody speaks uh, much English better than I. You can you can clearly understand. Okay. Uh, today is seventh day. 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 Seventh Interregional Cultural Studies no Summer School no Office of the Council. 7th of the month is a very popular event. You know, Japan and China are the first countries to start the war. まず最初にですね、えー、あの先ほどのラン,ラン先生が、えー、僕に一つの、あのーえー、課題を与えましたそれはですねここにもあるように、えー、日本民族はあ滅びたのか、えー、今の現在、日本で進行している憲法解釈、日本の軍国主義化というのは一体どういうことなのか、まずそこから話をした始めてみたいと思います、えー。皆さんよくご存知だと思いますけれども、日本では今、憲法を解釈をし直してです、ね、まず一つはです、ね、アメリカ軍と日本の自衛隊の統合。2つ目は、まあ、同じことですけれども、日本が戦争できる国になる、つまり、えー、従来のです、ねえー、と戦争を放棄した、外交手段としての武力を放棄した日本国憲法を、日本は今、捨てようとしている。一体日本で何が起こっているのか、えー、手がかりは2つあります一つはですね、えー、安倍が必ず安倍首相がですね必ず演説の前につける言葉です、えー、我々は価値を同じくする国と共に行動する同じ価値を持つ国、当然アメリカ、西洋のことを指して、価値を共有しない国というのはです、ねえー、これも当然アジア、特に中国、そうさすことは自明です。で、同じ価値というのはです、ね、例えば、えー、民主主義であり、えー、自由です。そして価値を同じくしない国というのは民主主義ではなく自由がない国そういうことを安倍はまず必ず演説の冒頭にこの話をしますこれが一つ二つ目はですね、えー、憲法そのものの話ですなぜ、えー、憲法を変えたかっていうのかそれはですね憲法が他国、よその国に押し付けられた日本が独自に作った憲法ではないからこの場合他国というのはアメリカを指しますつまり日本の憲法はアメリカに押し付けられた憲法
そこで日本は一つの自己矛盾に陥るつまりアメリカからの自立を目指して独自の憲法を作りアメリカにますます依存する,依存するアメリカからの独立を目指してあアメ押し付けられた憲法を廃棄することによってアメリカからの独立を目指せば目指すほどよりアメリカへの依存が強まる。現在の日本の状況を知る2つの手がかりです。これがまさにですね、今日話す竹内義美が今から50年前に直面した問題と全く同じです。それでは、えっと、それを前提にしてですね、これが今の日本の状況、これはまた後で面白い話しますけれども、えー、テキストに戻りたい、テキストの話をしていきたいと思います。方法としてのアジアはですね、あの一言で言うと、こういうことです。アジアという要素を考慮に入れてみたら何が見えてくるだろうか私たちの思考の一つの手がかりとしてアジアという概念アジアという場所アジアという考えを考慮すると我々はもっと今まで隠されてきたものが見えるのではないか、もしくは視野が、森豊かな視野が開けるのではないかという、そういう提案です。
常に3つの関係,関係性の中で思考しなさいという竹内の方法ですね。これをですね、この近代の兆候の中で彼は縦横無尽に自由自在に駆使していくえー、比較をするために3つを取りなさいということですけど、えー、方法としてのアジアの例はですね、全部地域ですインド日本中国地域ですねところが近代の彫刻の中ではですね竹内はこういう地域に限ってないあらゆる比較を地域とかいうことではなくてあらゆる視点の 3, 3つの視点からあらゆる比較を彼はフレキシブルに、えー、採用してるんですね、えー、少しだけ例を見るとですね例えば、えー、ほとんど日本語の日本語の人名が品質してきてですねほとんど訳がわからないと思うんですけどもえー、3つあるってことだけ言いますた例えばですね、えー、と彼はですね、えー、と3つの要素、えー、リ,リタレチュールワールド、えー、ジャンパニーロマンティックスクール、アンキョート学ワー、ートスクール、キョート学ワこの3つにはこの3つの要素で戦時中の日本の戦争の最中の日本の思想を配置していく分析していくそして戦争が終わった後戦争に対して日本人はどういう態度を取るのか、えー、彼はやっぱり3つになる1つが、えー、エミ、えー、リハビリテーション、そして<笑>エラディケーション、この3つの態度を彼は。検討してそして1941年から45年までの日本の戦争をどう解釈するのかという時に彼はやはり3つ、えー、1つが、えー、トータルウォー。この3つの要素が組み合わさって1941年から45年の日本の思想は進行しました。
相手っていうのはですね引き出してくる一つの手がかりが手がかりがですね、えー、名前はもう皆さんすでに忘れたかもしれませんけどもファシスト日本のファシストである大川俊明っていうファシ真のファシストから戦争の二重性を彼は引き出すの言説から彼は戦争の二重性を引き出してます、ねえー、これもショッキングですえ彼はですねあのー、で<笑>そしてこの中に主体この論文の中で彼が一生懸命考えている主体とは一体何,何かです、えー、方法としてのアジアで重要なのは主体の形成です主体とは誰かそれは戦争を戦った真の主人公である主体である民衆ですね、真の戦争の主体である民衆をどうやって変えていくかそれをこの,このエッセイの中で探るわけですけども探るわけですどうやって主体民,主、えー、と民衆という主体をどうやって変えていくのかをこのエッセイで先ほどしました。ここで駆使しているです、ね、方法はですね、えー、方法としてのアジアはですねその大きな地域日本中国の近代インドの植民地っていうかなり全体的なテーマですしかしこの近代の兆候の中で,です、ね、駆使しているのはですね、えー、非常に部分的なものです、えー、エンビティリハビリテーションエラディケーション非常に部分的なですから比較というのはですね全体と全体を比べることは可能です部分を比べても可能なんですで全体と部分という区別は竹内にとってないわけですそしてさらにですね竹内はこの近代の彫刻の中でですね時間をさらに後ろに伸ばしますそれは歴,史的に歴史的に過去に遡って近代の最初まで考察しますそれがですね読めばお分かりになるように一番近代の彫刻の一番最後のところに書いてある結論です結論は多分皆さん読んでも分かっちゃったつまりですね、えー、彼は最終的に福沢諭吉、えー、日本近代の最初の思想家を検討するわけですね、えー、彼が言ったのは2つあります1つは日本の独立ですもう一つは、雑は、雑。エスケープ・フロム・エイジャーこれはですね、竹内によれば、明治のあの状況での福沢諭吉は正しかった。と、竹内は言っています。しかしそのまま敗戦後もですね、日本は同じことをやっている。状況が全く違った中でですね、えー、戦争を経た後で同じことを考えては、それはダメだと、竹内は言ってますね。そのダメな理由は、ここに書いてありますけれども、えー、戦争、つまり戦争を考えてないからですね、日本に。戦争とは何かということを考えてないか
竹内のと戦争とは日本に踊って近代そのものですで竹内が出してくるのは先ほどが言っているように戦争に対する認識の中にアジアがないからです竹内にとって反省する場所竹内は自分が反省する場所をアジアと呼んだそれをまあ竹内から見て日本の戦争後の日本というのはそれを全く書いてるまあ、今日、2014年の今日まで続いてるえー、最初の問題に戻ってみましょう、えー、2つのことを言いました、えー、まず価値観の問題もう1つが憲法押し付けられた憲法という価値観の問題は先ほどから言っている日本近代そのものの問題です、ね。二つ目の問題、押し付けられた憲法です、えー。先ほど、えー、ダン先生が指摘あのご指摘していただいたようにですね、えー、日本では憲法を守れ、憲法を壊すな。という民衆による運動も行われているもし押し付けられた憲法であるならばこの民衆の憲法を守れっていう運動はやはり自己矛盾なんでしょうつまりですね軍事,的に、えー、軍事的なものも含めてアメリカからの独立をアメリカからの独立を目指しながらアメリカに押し、えー、目指せば目指すほど独立、えー、押し付けられた憲法に反対勢力は抵抗勢力はますます依存することになるのではないこれがまあ一つの疑問としてあるえ憲法は果たしてこの考える鍵はですね憲法は果たして押し付けられたものであるのかどうかということの一点高い、えー、日本国憲法というのはですね確かに作ったのはアメリカですしかしこの言い方はですね、日本がアメリカで占領されたという事実、つまりアメリカと日本の関係しか見てない言い方です。日本とアメリカの関係だけ見てはいけないと竹内氏には教えてえー、これはよく知られたことですけれども、えー、日本はあの、日本国憲法にはです、ね、国連憲章と同じ条項がたくさん含まれています、えー。日本国憲法というのは、第二次世界大戦、あるいはアジア太平洋戦争の結果です。結果のして生まれたもの。さらに言えばですね、えー、連合国、連合国の全体の意思でもある
連合国全体の意思の中にです、ね、当然、世界史的な出来事、つまり反ファシズム人民戦争の思想がこの中にあり、そしてもう一つは、アジア民衆の願いがこの中にあ,るあります。そして幾分かは日本民主の願いも入っているえー、そして日本はですねこの憲法を受け入れたこれはアメリカが押し付けた憲法ではありませんの民衆が押し付けた憲法そう考えると今日本で何が進行しているかは明らかでしょうか安倍はこのことが嫌いなんです